Well, to get an update on uh, just what exactly that means for Kenya and other places in uh, the world, we have with us, well, a person who will uh, crystallize this for us. He is, of course, Mr. Steve Felder. He's the managing director of Maskline East Africa. Karibu sana, sir. Sante sana, Peter. Yeah. So first off, uh, the fact that uh, we are seeing a slowdown in places, yet some other places are showing very deep resilience. Uh, why is this the case, especially uh, knowing that uh, there has been a few differences between the Central Corridor and the, the well, the Northern Corridor? Yeah, I think it's, it's been an interesting year with indeed some, some diverse developments uh, between corridors. Mm -hmm. If we look at the Northern Corridor and what's driving the developments, uh, I, I think first of all, what we've seen is a very good uh, crop uh, of mm -hmm. the agro commodities, which I think our last guest mentioned, agriculture is indeed the backbone of these economies, yes. and uh, and we see no different uh, uh, here in the northern corridor. Mm -hmm. So that has has definitely been uh, one of the key driving factors, uh, yes. uh, along with sustained uh, weak currencies, uh, or weaker currencies, fairly uh, along the northern corridor, particularly mm -hmm. in Uganda, mm -hmm. uh, although it's firmed up a bit lately. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we, we so. You know, export growth is, 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 is fairly buoyant, uh, mm -hmm. one could say, but of course exports only represents uh, around 25% of containerized trade mm -hmm. in the Northern Corridor. So mm -hmm. if we look at the, the imports, which is really the mainstay of, 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 of this market, yes. uh, Uganda's had an election year and, and a natural slowdown uh, in the build-up to elections mm -hmm. and a very, very slow recovery thereafter, uh, seemingly due to uh, reduced buying power the impact of South Sudan, yes. which uh, you know, which saw Uganda become kind of a trading hub mm -hmm. for South Sudan, mm -hmm. uh, and that slowed down a lot given the the political instability, uh, one could say, crisis mm -hmm. in South Sudan. Mm -hmm. um, so, so these are the types of factors which are, are really affecting. Uh, the economy. Mm -hmm. Certainly, we also see factors such as uh, the introduction of duties on, on auto in, in Kenya. Yes. We see the uh, r new paper requirements where 40% needs to be sourced locally, mm -hmm. and that certainly has a you know acts as a handbrake yeah. on uh, on growth. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about uh, what essentially is the elephant in the room for most people: the fact that uh, we are putting up a railway, the SGR, which is expected to transform the industry in various ways. What is your forecast on this, especially knowing that uh, the backbone of this entire infrastructure, the corridors, has been road traffic? Absolutely, and, and I think that the SGR is a potential game changer for the region. Mm -hmm. We've just seen it being launched in uh, between Addis uh, Ababa and Djibouti. Yes. Uh, I was at that launch recently, and, and mm -hmm. certainly it holds a lot of potential. Um, I think the you know certainly we have to see the impact of, of pricing. We have to see the reliability and frequency of the services. Mm -hmm. But so far, so good. And if, and if history is anything to judge by in similar mm -hmm. economies, mm -hmm. this has a transformative opportunity. There still is a major disconnect along the value chain, where, uh, for example, it costs uh, more than uh, triple to bring a container from. Uh, Mombasa port into South Sudan mm -hmm. than it does to bring that same container from Shanghai to Mombasa. Wow. So I think the, the opportunity for transforming inland logistics, reducing the cost, improving the efficiency through the introduction of the SGR is generally a very positive one. Mm -hmm. uh, there have been, uh, has been the construction of uh, new roads, uh, uh, for example, the north, uh, the road through Nairobi, Moyale, uh, which then goes into Ethiopia, parts of southern Sudan and that sort of thing. Do you think this will have significant impact in planning down the costs that we are talking about? I, I think, you know, all the road developments are positive. Yes. All the electrification developments are positive, mm -hmm. uh, particularly when it comes to industrialization and correcting the imbalance. Uh, the port, this, the advent of the second container terminal in yes. Mombasa mm -hmm. is a very positive and significant uh, development, as is, of course, the SGR as a key infrastructure development. So I think there's no s s one silver bullet that's going to transform the cost of logistics and the efficiency of logistics, mm -hmm. but I think certainly these building blocks uh, are all very important. As regards uh, Ethiopia, mm -hmm. I think certainly that market will still, for the foreseeable future, continue to be served primarily via Djibouti mm -hmm. and a little bit via Port Sudan. I don't see the Kenyan uh, ports playing a large role in that. Mm -hmm. uh, let's uh, talk about uh, two final things before I let you go. First, the diversification agenda, the fact that uh, even with this part of the world being mostly agricultural, there has been a move to start adding value to be able to drive up exports as we see them and uh, to serve, uh, start serving different uh, parts of the world uh, apart from the traditional ones. What do you think we have to get right to be able to start to crystallize this? Again, Peter, I don't think there's a single solution. I think yeah. it's a series of solutions. I think, first of all, we have some natural ingredients which, which bode well. Mm -hmm. We have a, a, a very... Uh, 
sizable and, and, and fairly low cost labor force in this part of the world. Yes. We have improving electrification and the cost of electricity is reducing slowly. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I think we have a strategic location relative to many parts of the world. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think that it, it takes a lot of focus, it takes a lot of diligence. I think we're seeing some encouraging developments such as the new VW plant. Yes. We're seeing, uh, the, we, of course, the leather park that was announced earlier this week. Do you think uh, the special week. economic zones will make a difference? I think it will make a difference. Mm -hmm. But will it really move the needle uh, to, to, for example, make it a 50-50 balance? Yes. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's a very, very long journey. Mm -hmm. and, and unfortunately, we see this in, in many emerging markets across Africa where mm -hmm. we see this imbalance. But I think anything that can move the needle a little bit is, of course, very positive. Uh, yeah. As an African, personally, I, I would like to see this happening. I would like to see more value addition, like to see more industrialization. Mm -hmm. And I think we are slowly starting to see it, but we have a long way to go. Okay, indeed. Uh, thank you, sir, for taking the time to talk to us. Uh, Mr. Well, uh, Steve Felder, he is the managing director for Maskline Eastern Africa, uh, talking to us about containerized uh, traffic trends at the end, of course. Uh, giving us insight into the move towards, well, industrializing these parts of the world. Thank you, sir.